Shots fired! Shots fired! So the first video shown there was somebody's trailer project showcasing how lifelike things are in Unreal 5. And then the second one is a game called Unrecord, which is a game being developed in the Unreal 5 engine. And as we can see, shows just truly how realistic combat can look in a advanced engine like this. It's apparent that Every coming day we see more and more hyper-realistic scenes in gameplay using the Unreal Engine 5 technology. As these videos become more and more prevalent, and seeing gameplay with such clear graphics is both amazing and frightening at the same time. For what new beautiful scenes it can create for the gamer, but also what dark things can be realized as well. As an older gamer, it's amazing to see how far graphics have come. My first console was the original Nintendo with its 2D graphics and limited options. To see something like Unreal 5 almost feels akin to recognizing the Wright Brothers' first flight in 1903 to the first gen engine being patented 20 years later by Frank Whittle. To see things have gone in such a relatively short time span is absolutely amazing. I can only wonder what new games, concepts, cinematic moments can come out of something being built on an engine like Unreal 5, and what will walk in its footsteps to take us to even newer heights both from a gaming perspective and from much more. But I can't help and think about what can happen when technology crosses the threshold of reality when it comes to video games. When we think it apply today's modern games and concepts to, to tomorrow's technology, we see that video games are always pushing the limit about what is possible and what new worlds we can have unlocked to discover. But is there a line in the sand of what we should not cross? I think about the show Batman Beyond, an animated Batman series set in the future that came out in the late 90s and stayed on until the early 2000s. There was an episode called Hooked Up where people were falling victim to a virtual reality that allowed them to do whatever they wanted and it was so lifelike they couldn't discern reality from the virtual world. And one by one, the people who used it got addicted. With that reference, you're probably figuring out what my angle is on all this. We've already seen cases of people getting addicted to MMORPGs in the past, like WoW, EVE, and many others. And I can't help but wonder that if people play games like World of Warcraft, or if you've played it like I have, we all experience a world that is similar to ours in many ways, but still different. It had people in there with their own thoughts, personalities, and goals. For many, myself included, that meant we were a bit more involved in what we maybe would have normally put forth to a game because of that social aspect. We were more bought in, more willing to give our time and money to a game, but because of its cartoonish layout, limited technology, and personally I think its poor development direction, many of us were able to eventually disconnect from the game. But I can't help but wonder, with the layer of technology and reality becoming more gray, is that ability to disconnect going to become harder for us as humans? Are we going to find that virtual worlds that are built for us going to become much more preferable than the real ones that we currently inhabit? Is your next version of Sims going to be a better parody of the life that you lead now? Many of us already are guilty of putting ourselves, friends, maybe some romantic crushes into a game to interact with them. But if in the not so distant future we can create near lifelike models that bend to our very will and interact with near flawless versions of ourselves, could someone begin to wonder what is the point of real-world interaction with their crush if they can just have what they really want in their game? Also, what will this mean for the controversial games of the world? What would Call of Duty's no Russian mission look like in an engine like Unreal 5? Is that worth knowing? Should we ever know? Does it give the world's next mass shooter an ability to use something like this as a simulator? Would playing violent games like Deadly Space potentially cause PTSD to someone if they witness a person getting eviscerated like so many do in the series on an engine like or even more advanced than Unreal Engine 5? I'm not a psychologist nor a sociologist, so I only have my own opinions on many of these questions I present to you, but I am curious as to what you all think. Am I just being too cautious? Should we just in, en in essence fuck around and find out? Or is there something in the middle? Let me know in the comments what you think. 
this is your first time here, hopefully you enjoyed something like this. And please hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more. And of course, hit that like button as well. That also helps out a lot. Thank you guys. This is Last Rohican and happy gaming.